Hi, welcome back to Legal Cut Pro, the Canadian entertainment law podcast. My name is Greg Pang. And I'm Michelle Molyneux. In today's podcast, we are recording a quick update on the Gigi Hadid case, the copyright lawsuit against Gigi Hadid. But first, let's go to a shout out for our sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by Ampia and its professional development team. Special thanks to Jane Toogood, our audio editor. You can find her on Instagram at JJ underscore Toogood. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle, how have you been doing? I've been good, thanks. I've been good. Still grinding it out in Vancouver here, uh, doing some auditions here and there. And exciting news, I've been uh, given the CMPA Diversity Mentorship Grant. So I'll be doing a producing mentorship. Oh, excellent. Congratulations. And when are you going to start that? Thank you. Uh, my official start date will be September 9th. So yeah, hopefully I'll have some interesting things to share for the pod as well from that experience. So what does that entail? What, uh, what will, you, will you be actually going through as part of the, the grant program? I will continue being a baby producer. <laughs> okay, excellent. So, yeah, so just kind of going through all the steps. I'm hoping to learn a lot more about financing and in general, hopefully we're going to be taking um, a movie through production. So. Well, that would be really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. It should be a really good learning experience. So. And sorry, so that's going to happen. You're going to be coming back to Edmonton for that, right? I think, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm not sure the exact dates, um, but I believe, yeah, I'll be in Edmonton through until the new year. We look forward to having you back. Yay, the- thank you. Ed- I'm excited to be back. <laughs> Hopefully still auditioning in Vancouver at the same time, though. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, move on to our topic of discussion today being our Gigi Hadid copyright infringement lawsuit update. So earlier in the year, Gigi Hadid, a very popular model, was sued over a paparazzi photo. The lawsuit by the paparazzi agency alleged that Hadid did not have the rights to the paparazzi photo that she had then posted on her Instagram. Now, Hadid has a very large following on her Instagram. At the time of this recording, Gigi Hadid has 49 million followers on Instagram. And at the time of the lawsuit, I believe she was closer to 48.7 million followers. So there were lots of Instagram users who would have been exposed to the photo that she posted. So the stakes are really high for the paparazzi agencies who own these paparazzi photos because these photos can actually be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, exactly. And the case is particularly relevant, of course, because it could have implications for interactions between paparazzi photographers uh, and the rights holders, uh, celebrities and the social media community at large. And there are a number of other celebrities who post paparazzi photos of themselves on social media. So this could have wide ranging implications. So Gigi responded to this lawsuit, or rather her lawyers did, and she initially filed a fair use defense to the allegations. Hadid argued that she was the one, she actually had some of the rights to the photograph in that she contributed to its creation. And her argument included that she posed for the photo, She smiled for the paparazzi, she chose her outfit that day, and that she cropped the photo before it was posted. Therefore, as her fair use defense, Hadid felt that she wasn't required to own or license the image before she posted it. So, and this is what we were kind of laughing about the uh, during our last recording was um, before we knew that there was an update was that I think there was a some article that says she was wanted to was it rewrite copyright laws. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Right. And we thought that was kind of funny. So there is uh, perhaps some merit for this fair use defense, but ultimately not a whole lot, at least according to an article in the Hollywood Reporter by a lawyer by the name of James Sumatro. And we'll provide a link to that article in the show notes here. I think the uh, in the end, the fair use argument would likely looks like it likely would not meet the four factors in the American fair use to be able to successfully assert that kind of defense. But that case wasn't actually decided on fair on fair use, was it? No, it was very interesting. Um, in the end, the court did grant Hadid's motion to dismiss the lawsuit. But it was only based on a technicality. The lawsuit was dismissed because the paparazzi agency had not yet received copyright registration at the time that it filed the lawsuit. In Canada, registration isn't a prerequisite for being able to sue for copyright infringement. But in the States, 
in the recent uh, U.S. Supreme Court decision, it clarified the law. You need to, as a copyright holder, hold the actual registration to your copyrighted work before you're able to bring a lawsuit for infringement. In this case, as, as uh, you mentioned, Michelle, of course, they did not have the registration yet. And it takes, I believe, the time from filing to receiving your registration could take a year or something like that uh, for the U.S. Copyright Office to actually grant you that registration. It may be a little bit quicker now, but um, that's what I last heard. But uh, it, uh, it's not something that you just file and then you receive the next week. Mm-hmm. So this could put some copyright rights holders at a disadvantage if they want to assert their rights for uh, infringement. But in the end, like you said, technicality, they did not have the registration. They sued for infringement. They were not entitled to do so. The defense, they put forward a motion to dismiss and they got it. Good job, Gigi Hadid's lawyers. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, so at the end of the day, yep, the dismissal had nothing to do with fair use. It was not decided on the merits, but because they did not fulfill this formality before filing their suit and they were not granted uh, like a temporary stay or something like that until the registration was received, uh, but rather they essentially told that you can no no I don't think they were told in the decision but the implication is that the current lawsuit is dismissed and when they receive the registration perhaps they could sue again so in the show notes we provide a very good link to a YouTube video by uh, Leonard French who's a lawyer in the United States uh, with the YouTube channel Lawful Masses and he explains exactly how this whole motion to dismiss worked out And we're also providing a link to the the judgment by Judge Pamela J. Chen uh, dismissing the lawsuit against Hadid uh, in the show notes as well. So yeah, so if you're curious and you want to find out more about how this all worked, then there's uh, two uh, resources that you can have a look at there. Awesome. Yeah, and um, with that... And one of the main reasons why we want to update this case, and not just because it's kind of an interesting novel, not novel, but a contemporary situation in copyright law is because this spurred some some discussion on you know theoretical defenses here, and I suppose the the limitations or the the weaknesses of, of copyright law, at least in the United States, and a lot of that is mirrored here in Canada as well. And one law professor in the United States, uh, her name is Anne Marie Bridey. She's a professor at the University of Idaho College of Law. Wrote an article and is released on. Well, today, as of this recording, uh, August 6th, um, entitled uh, Novel Theory of Implied Copyright License in Paparazzi Picks. And here she states that it seems reasonable to me, applying principles of equity, that Hadid should be allowed to make limited, unauthorized use of paparazzi photos of her. It's like, huh, okay, that's a really interesting assertion there. Hmm. And she goes on to write that when Hadid saw the plaintiff photographer, Hadid looked straight at the camera, smiled, and struck a pose, as one might expect from a professional model adept at working the lens. And this is part of her, some of these, uh, uh, I guess, assertions or, or, or facts here that she brings up it was part of Hadid's fair use defense in, in uh, defending against the lawsuit. But here, uh, Professor Bridey puts it in the context of implied license. And she goes on to write here that Hadid knows as well as any photographer what sells a photo. Moreover, the photo at issue in the lawsuit is commercially valuable primarily because it is a photo of her. A similarly composed photo featuring an anonymous attractive woman would be worthless to the media outlets that license paparazzi photos of celebrities. Interesting. The value of paparazzi photos derives less from the photographer's creative choices, which copyright is designed to protect, than from the celebrity of its subject, which is not copyright's concern. In paparazzi photos, the photographer's creative rights and the subject's publicity rights are entangled. Equity suggests that the primary source of a paparazzi photo's value, its famous subject, should be entitled to share in that value to some extent. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. So this is a, I think she writes, I think on a Twitter thread, I'll, I'll post that in the show notes as well, that this is a very narrow doctrine. It hasn't been implied in that way before. And I'm not aware of this kind of, well, there is the theory of implied license and or in Canadian copyright, but not applied in this kind of context before. So that's a very, very interesting theoretical defense, 
against copyright infringement is that you know that without me having this photo being taken in public, your photo would be worthless. So there should be an implied license, somehow some kind of equitable defense here that, well, I should be able to post these photos uh, of myself because you are profiting from this as well. Yeah, very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. What, what else is interesting here is that there was a, in, um, in a Twitter thread about this topic with, uh, that Anne-Marie Bridie started here, at least one lawyer replied that here, at the end of the day, this should be, maybe implied license is not the best way to go here, but there uh, is some, some kind of wiggle room in U.S. copyright law and uh, the uh, defense of fair use that this is fair for a subject of a photograph to post a picture of herself on social media. But it might not be fair for her to have direct commercial gain to that photograph that she posts. So mm. some very interesting uh, conversations here on what should be allowed here under yeah. copyright law and copyright law currently as it is, at least in the United States and, and very similar in Canada, is that it does not permit someone like a Hadid to post photos of herself, even though the person or the, the, the rights holder of these photographs is benefiting greatly commercially from these photos of her, that there should be some kind of li- implied license or uh, exception in fair use that goes beyond the traditional fair use analysis or fair dealing here in Canada that allows the subject of the photo to be able to use those photos of her. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I and mean, uh, we have talked about how, you know, we, we don't use, uh, normally talk about policy and law in, on this uh, podcast, but this is very interesting. And mm-hmm. maybe in the future, there could be legislative changes or, or maybe even some case law that uh, leads the way here and make copyright more fair. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> I any, like it. It's yeah, interesting. Any, any, yeah. Anything else on uh, the Hadid case here? Um, no, I think that's. I think that's all we've got for Hadid. But it's just going to be curious to see because inevitably the same case is going to happen with another celebrity, and it's going to be interesting to see what the courts are actually going to end up saying about this situation. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it, it appears though that they're re- they're definitely reading this decision and they won't make the same mistake, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like I have here, like, yeah, in our notes here about, uh, that you wrote here, Michelle, about uh, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. <laughs> Grande, sorry. <laughs> is that, uh, sorry, I, I don't know who that is. Is that, is she, uh, <gasps> Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, she's a pop singer. <laughs> oh, she's a pop singer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and she was, uh, sued as well for the uh, very same kind of, uh, very similar situ in a very similar situation. Yeah, same situation. Yeah, there were some paparazzi photos of her. She posted them on her Instagram. Um, I believe one of the photos received over 3 million likes. And the paparazzi, this time it's the actual individual photographer, I believe, who is suing. Oh, okay. And and uh, the paparazzi here uh, in our notes says that uh, he or she actually registered the copyright, uh, uh, registered <laughs> the work with the copy- U.S. Copyright Office before bringing the suit. Yes, yeah. So it seems like kind of all of the boxes are checked. So they're, the case shouldn't be dismissed on a technicality, hopefully. So maybe this case will bring us kind of um, uh, a little bit of a message from the courts about which direction that the copyright law is going in, in this regard. Well, and given that she's a, I think she's a rich celebrity, Ariana Grande. Yeah, very. So, so she can afford <laughs> expensive lawyers. <laughs> yes, very <for> expensive. This. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if they don't end up settling, the, uh, we were thinking that uh, they, they might bring up some of the uh, some of these same defenses that Gigi Hadid did then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll huh. be really interesting. So maybe we'll have to do an update on that in a few months and see what's happening. Absolutely. And just for my own curiosity, say, what does she sing, Ariana <laughs> Grande? <laughs> um, she's got that one, uh, Break Up With Your Boyfriend. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, what's another one that's really popular of hers? Thank you, next. Okay. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll look it up. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. She, she's got some good stuff. She's got a very iconic ponytail. She has a pet pig. <laughs> uh, a pet pig. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Really cool. 
all right, maybe I'll, maybe I'll check it out. Uh, yeah. if I'm, if I'm bored or something like that. I'll uh, punch it in on Spotify, punch your name on Spotify and uh, I'll send you some songs. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. So that, I think that does it for our update here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's everything for today. Yeah. If you've enjoyed this episode's topic, please leave us a review on uh, iTunes. Um, if you really like it, a five-star review would be fantastic. And yeah. <laughs> if you hate it, that maybe don't bother. So, uh, and a reminder, uh, you, you can find me, you can email me at greg at legalcutpro.com and find me on Twitter at Cyclaw. And Michelle, you, they can email you at michelle at legalcutpro.com and find you on Instagram at... Uh, michelle Molyneux. And please follow because clearly I need more followers to catch up with Gigi and her 49 million. <laughs> there we go. So you can monetize on all those, uh, those paparazzi photos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you can find uh, Legal Cut Pro on Instagram as well. That's right. At Legal Cut Pro, right? Mm -hmm. That's our Instagram account. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, until next time, we will see you all later. Thanks for listening. Legal Cut Pro has been produced by Greg Pang and Michelle Molyneux. Excerpts of Just Say Go, Dr. Octavo, Mendicity, mixed courtesy of Dr. Octavo and Michelle Molyneux. This podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only. Nothing stated on it is to be construed as legal advice. The views expressed by the hosts of Legal Cut Pro and any guests are their own and do not represent the opinions of any organization or other person unless otherwise stated. Intro sound clip film projector countdown has been truncated from its original form and is copyright 2013 Ivan Gabovich used under creative commons by 3 license outro sound clip film projector reel runs out by stefan021 is used under creative commons cc01.0 license this podcast is copyright of red frame law and is licensed to you under creative commons attribution non-commercial cc by 4.0 license for details of that license visit creativecommons.org <laughs>